안녕하십니까? 골담 치과병원 치과부철과 김학우입니다. Greetings. My name is Kim h a k u I'm with the Goldam Dental Hospital c r o s s t h e o n t i c s Department. Today I'm going to talk about the treatment option for e d e n t u l o s patients. A complete e d e n t u l o s patient visited before implant treatment was available. Complete denture used to be used for such patients. Some have very good reach. However, when complete denture is used for a long time by a e d e n t u l o s patient, the reach would be severely resorbed, hardly any posterior reach, and the denture has not been adjusted for a long time. The patient had pain and difficulty in chewing. When the gum is so bad like this, in a patient with complete denture, It is very painful treatment for doctors and patients. If you look at here on the panorama, combination syndrome was experienced by the patient. The patient had anterior maxillary ridge bone resorption and e p i l i s f i s s u r a t u m and downgrowth of maxillary tuberosities. The mandibular ridge resorbed up to the inferior alveolar nerve. In the mandible, only anterior teeth remained, so overdenture was used, which was not adjusted, so the balance continued to worsen, which was resorbed, patient suffered. So we need to consider the factors to fabricate the complete dentures, three factors, retention, stability, and support. Among the three factors, patients and dentists, usually we talk about falling dentures, So we focus on retention usually, that is the psychological comfort for the patients, but like other prostheses, rather than retention, we need to secure support and stability so that dentures and prostheses can be comfortably used. In this case, the patient did not want implant treatment. Selective pressure impression was taken for the anterior region to apply less force there. The previous denture continued to prick the ridge diagonally, and um, we provided a normal occlusal plane. And the patient did not have the ridge very much, so appropriate impressions were taken for the upper and lower. Bilaterally balanced occlusion was provided for the patient. In this case, there was no reach, so that lowered the stability, but support became better in terms of occlusion. The cusp angles were lowered a little bit. Before, the patient had a difficulty in eating painful gum and denture was mobile and painful. After changing the denture to this one for the last 10 years, The patient had eaten very well despite the denture was a little bit loose. I start implant lecture with a complete denture as it is the beginning for e d e n t u l o s patients. When completely e d e n t u l o s patients visit, they are usually using dentures. There are various situations for e d e n t u l o s patients. 64-year-old male with abundant reach. This patient began to use dentures from his 30s, and he's 55, there's hardly any reach, which is resorbed up to the inferior alveolar nerve, and it is difficult to use dentures in this case. Most of such patients want to refabricate the dentures or receive implant dentures. In this case, I think the most important thing is to check the previous denture. And there was a patient using this denture. It was used for more than 15 years, and there was a lot of wearing, and the anterior teeth were considerably worn down. Such patients tend to do inward lip roll, thrust tongues, or grind left to right due to severe resorption of TMJ condylus. Surprisingly, the patient wanted a new denture, not necessarily because of difficulty of chewing, but it was not aesthetic and it was hard to apply a lot of force for chewing. Such patients are adjusted to the denture, so if complete denture is fabricated appropriately, that can be used by such patients. We need to check in the existing denture the pain points and whether the denture is extended to the important anatomic landmarks. Dentures can be provided, but let's look at a treatment option using implants. When we explain implant over denture, we need to listen to our patients. When a patient visits, they talk about the prosthetic problems and they want 
good denture or implant treatment, you should not routinely provide the treatment options regardless of the patient situation. Our ultimate goal is to make dentures used properly. Patients usually say the denture falls off too easily, so if there is a problem, we need to use the minimal number of implants and the denture is used properly by the patient, so we need to improve retention for the over denture. If reach is severely resorbed, rather retention. And if the patient wants to chew properly and if chewing is done by gum, the denture may be shaky. So we need to focus more on the improvement of stability and support for the overdenture. The most challenging cases when patients cannot adjust to the dentures and they want a couple of implants and maxillary open palate. If two or four implants are placed and the upper open palate is provided, the implants would be too much overloaded, so you need to discuss it with the patient. So you need to go for fixed solution or six implant placement with milled bar over denture. Talk about the treatment option using implants. First, implant over denture. Dentists need to determine the type of over dentures. Depending on your experience, I believe you have heard of locators, which is currently widely used. Two implants are placed, each solitary type, and that's the overdenture. We used to use bar type quite a lot. Implants are placed, and they are connected with a bar, and using attachments, they are fixed. Indications for implant overdentures. This option is appropriate for those who are used to using dentures. Due to long-time use of complete denture, the vertical space would be widened, and bone resorption occurs vertically and horizontally, so lip support would be lacking. And the denture is indicated for those whose reach is resorbed quite considerably in the posterior region near the sinus and up to the inferior alveolar nerve in the mandible. As I said before, overdentures can be classified into solitary type and bar type. The solitary type, stud types, and locators, and magnets, which is not indicated in here. Bar types, head of bar, round bar, using clips, and milled bar type, using friction. The milled bar, if used for a long time, can be detached so locators can be added or magnets can be added, or ERA used to be added in the past. So the solitary type, bar type, they are available, but uh, we need to consider retention, stability, and support. Which one should be focused in terms of the overdenture? We need to consider how much support we will obtain from implants after they are placed. We usually place two implants, and that is um, an overdenture using implants for retention. That needs to be explained to patients. This is just like denture, and implants are assisting the dentures. Maximum tissue coverage is similar to conventional complete denture. So many tissue supported over denture. Here two implants are placed and a bar is provided. They are protruded a little bit, and therefore they provide stability or support, actually. It's a small number of implants, and it can be rotated, therefore support comes from implants, but primarily from tissue. And implants are providing assistance. This was used quite a lot when locators or studs were not used. In this case, when we take a denture impression, the flange can be made short, but basically, for tissue implant supported over denture, sufficient extension is better. When reach is severely resorbed and the support is primarily coming from implants, so that is the fully implant supported over denture case. In this case, four or six implants are placed and bars are connecting them. This is a denture, but primarily the support is from the implants with minimal flange. 
Let's look at pros and cons. Solitary type. It's simple. It's easy to do. A minimal number of implants are used. This looks like a denture. Uh, the attachment contact areas need to be connected later. It is convenient in terms of vertical and horizontal space, and it is easy to fabricate. So this is implant retentive over denture, tissue supported implant over denture. If we fabricate over denture without evaluating vertical and horizontal space, problems may occur at the stage of fabrication. When a denture is fabricated, due to cost reasons, if only two implants are placed and without trimming the bone, we cannot secure at least 11.8 millimeters vertical space for locator type and 17 millimeters for bar type. This will be bulged invading the tongue space. If it is too thin, it will break. The solitary type among the locators, they are separate, so there is no limitation in terms of horizontal space. But in the bar type, the bar and clip should be used, so at least the 30 mm space between the implants or 20 mm usually, the space is required. If you compare these two types, the bar type, bar inside needs to be cast. If it gets bigger, more accurate impression is required at the bar and the denture, the housing, the connection should be considered. Inexperienced lab technician or dentist may find this more difficult than fabricating the fixed type. It may cost more, so if you can use the solitary type, it is simpler. Disadvantage of solitary type, they are individual, so if the placement paths are not right during chewing, the protruded ones and angled ones are overloaded, and the locator housing, the male components would be worn down, and the retention would be reduced, so the patient would visit you more frequently. If one is more overloaded, if it is uh, attachment that is wearing, it's okay, but if implants are wearing down, peri-implantitis can occur. The most important thing that is about the solitary type is the placement path. Relatively, bar type is used more on the maxilla. It is not easy to place implants in proper path, and the arch itself is divergent. Not a bone loss with the solitary type. Bar type, even though their angles are different, they are splinted, so more stability to implants, and they are protruded, so better resistance to the load. It is hard to fabricate. Pros and cons of the bar type, they are the opposite of the solitary type. Pros, they are connected, so chewing force is distributed, and the implants provide retention and support less limitation to the placement path as they are cast together. Cons, space limitation is rather big and it is hard to fabricate the prosthesis and hard to repair. Further information about the overdenture through online as well as offline lectures. As said before, it is rather complicated and the interval is important and if it is fractured and the bar is disconnected, it is not easy to repair. Recommendation of implant over denture. 2002 McGill consensus statement. In the mandible, it is not easy to provide dentures, so maxilla conventional complete denture. If a patient can get used to the closed palate, then the patient can adapt to this. In the mandible, solitary or bar type over denture using two implants, patients would have much better chewing and comfort, according to the consensus. 
Clinically, I explain to patients with a little upper reach and who can adapt to the complete denture easily to place two implants to improve quality of life. Important to principles of placing implants, they need to be placed symmetrically left to right in parallel vertical to the occlusal surface at the same height. Otherwise, the denture will get loose and the patient will come back often. Or implant over denture for solitary type, the angle of placement and the positions are very important. Second, treatment option that you may already know. My sequence of this lecture is moving toward the more fixed type, not necessarily more complicated ones. So the second treatment option is IARPD, which is very popular these days. Among the treatment options that I described today, IARPD is based on the most recent studies. So I describe for complete edentulous patients, we provide some teeth and move from overdenture to RPD. There are two mechanisms for IARPD. Two implants are placed bilaterally and surveyed crowns are provided. Clasp type conventional RPD is fabricated. Prior studies were about placing implants, healing or attachments are added, improving load mechanics of RPD. This is indicated for patients who do not want fixed type but a solution with a few implants. Due to anatomic limitations in the posterior region, overdenture or IARPD can be applied. This would be the most effective case for IARPD. Uh, this is crossed occlusion. If we provide RPD with the normal prosthesis due to imbalance of force, problems include the discomfort, relining, and difficulty of adjusting to the occlusion. Placing implants would improve the balance of force and the patients would chew much better. IARPD, mobile overdenture. Only healing abutment is used. Three factors were looked at for complete dentures if retention is provided. In a distal extension case, class 1 can be changed to class 3. With the healing abutment with the retention, chewing can be improved and soft tissue would feel better. Going one step further, locators, magnets, or studs can be used, preventing the raising of the denture, so retention can be improved, removable partial denture. We have implanted treatments covered by National Health Insurance in Korea, and uh, implants have been advanced, and crown can be provided with the rest, providing support. RPD can be shaped for better chewing. Actually, survey the crown up to the crown is provided for class RPD, IARPD. When we use an overdenture, we need to think about the positions. The measly positioned implant RPD can be possible, and distally positioned implant RPD can be made. To increase the chewing efficiency, the distally positioned implant RPD is much better to prevent sinking of denture base. In distal extension cases, visually positioned implant RPD helps in terms of omitting the clasp on the most posterior tooth, but the leverage is at the back and it cannot prevent the sinking of distal tissue, so actually distally positioned one is more beneficial for chewing. Implants in combination with the distal extension RPD Presence of implants can prevent alveolar bone resorption among many merits. So bone resorption can be reduced, preventing the sinking of denture, provide additional retention. Sinking of denture base would give more force to the most posterior natural tooth, can reduce stress on the natural abutment teeth, and it can reduce the number of needed clasps, as you saw before. Above all, the patient would feel more comfortable. So this type, implant positions, whether our goal is support retention 
or aesthetics, depending on the goal, appropriate positions can be made, and a few implants would get a lot of forces, so we need to choose implant positions considering residual bone quantity and quality. RPD has the path of insertion if implants are placed beyond that, attachments can be wear more. So for RPD, for implant positioning, this should be considered. As you saw in the illustrations, attachments include a healing abutment, O-rings, studs, and locators and magnets. For the removable type, there are limitations. Even if implants are supported and in line, over time the reach would go down, so we need to do periodic recall check. Otherwise, components of implants would wear down, implants would get more loaded, and the flange can be broken. 60-year-old female patient visited me in a wheelchair from a nursing home. The denture had crossed the occlusion. So in this patient, when denture is used, there was pain in the mandible. In the previous dental clinic she visited, the lower denture was removed and it was very difficult for her to chew. To provide support to the opposite of these teeth, implants were placed. The existing denture was replaced, it was relined, and the bite was adjusted. A remarkable thing happened, clasp did not increase. With the support from here, the denture was stabilized, which was a sinking, with a stable occlusal plane. The chewing force was balanced, and the patient felt much more comfortable. And then she visited about three years later, and uh, I could see a remarkable occlusal force of Korean people. You can see the root here, and only two teeth with the denture. You can see the marks, which is consistent with this. So every six months or a year, the relining should have been done in the posterior region, but the patient did not come back. So these were wearing. The bone was stable, and in the posterior region, a relining was provided, and the patient felt comfortable. These days, we can provide implants and crowns. Clasp RPD is more used these days. This is a typical case. Bilaterally, implants were placed. The placement of implants on both sides, RPD design gets simpler and cleaner, providing better chewing and comfort to patients. So we need to consider the number of implants and positions and how to design this to make crowns. This is general RPD design sequence. First, we need to determine the abutment type, and we need to determine the rest location, guide the plane alignment, and major connector design. This is the conventional RPD design. When we place implants, abutments can be provided in desired positions. With the use of implants, RPD design is made simple. Bilateral symmetry can be secured. If it is a unilateral, RPD itself is hard to use by the patients and chewing efficiency can be lowered. Next, as you learned, implants need to be placed where peer abutments can be avoided. RPD design, major connector and others are the same. Implants do not have a PDL, so RPD would receive more force. If it is made thin and the fabrication principles are not followed, the framework can be detached and the rest can be susceptible to fractures. So we have more space than natural dentition, so a rest should be made with more thickness. Implant positions where bone is abundant and it receives a lot of bite force, so sufficient diameter implants need to be selected. When occlusal force is strong, the fixture design favorable to occlusal force should be selected, and we need to consider the conditions of opposing teeth. PFM is used for the prosthesis. 
metal should be used where a lot of force is applied and ER design is preferable for retrievability because of lateral force. If you look at this case, 70-year-old male didn't have any problem with the upper complete denture and he wanted implants after extraction. If poor teeth are extracted and if we provide a denture with these two natural teeth, the leverage would be increasing. So two implants were placed and a denture is provided. And it is very well used with a stable mandible. Fixed prosthesis, the conventional full fixed implant restoration is recommended. So uh, sufficient implants are placed, such as like natural teeth. At the beginning, fixed hybrid denture can be considered, uh, suggested by Bronemark. If patients prefer fixed prosthesis and has economic means and has good oral hygiene, this has less bone resorption and not excessive interarch space and class 1 bite can be achieved and if lip support is sufficient, chewing efficiency would increase, so full fixed implant restoration is the best solution. Contrary to the over danger mentioned before, when mild bone resorption is observed and lip support is sufficient and teeth are not too long because of less bone resorption if there is no limitations in terms of anatomics. A full fixed implant restoration is the best. We need to consider how many implants will be placed, the clinical process, prosthetic design, and others. In this case, the number of implants needs to be considered, bone quality, quantity, and prosthetic design should be given consideration. Section the design in the upper 9 to 10 implants, in the mandible 8 to 10. If we exclude number 7, 6 implants can be used for the mandible. Clinical sequence, due to constraint of time, this will be dealt with in the offline lecture. Many things to consider for the full fixed implant prosthesis clinical sequence. A general evaluation should be done, and then, in many cases, a dentition is broken in a patient, so we need to check job relation in terms of CR, VD, and TMJ, if it is okay, and the lip support. Based on that, we need to determine fixed or removable, and we need to determine implant number and the position. For the fixed restoration, implant stent or guide, one guide, should be fabricated for accurate positioning. After that, provisional should be fabricated. Stable VDCR position, chewing efficiency should be checked, and aesthetic satisfaction should be checked. And the provisional temporary can be reproduced for the fixed final restoration. The second one for the full fixed implant restoration is the fixed hybrid denture. This was tried earlier than others in the history. This was used when the upper jaw had a complete denture and the lower posterior ridge was severely resorbed. Rene Mark placed the four or five implants anterior to intermental foramen and cantilever in the posterior. Implants were placed and connected as one body. The denture base and artificial teeth were placed over them. It is a rather complicated procedure. It was hard to maintain due to complications like fractures of teeth in the frame. This is the type. In the mandible, five were placed and they are extended distally. If there's not enough space, a fracture would occur. This is the prosthesis that can be used after sufficient resorption. At least 60 millimeters of space is required. Plants are placed only in the anterior region and uh, in the posterior region. Cantilever is used, so usually the straight type is used. But to reduce the load on the cantilever, a tilted type can be used as well. In the past, uh, it used to be used uh, quite a lot, but not, not much lately. 
With the advancement of CAD CAM and digital technology, it is re-emerging with Magic 4 using zirconia and digital technology. So once they are fabricated, it has enough space like a removable. And if patients have difficulty in pulling it out, it's hard to cleanse and the gum may swell due to food retention. If there is sufficient space, the hybrid type would be better for good cleansability. Don't worry, there are many options you already know. First, complete dentures. A few implants can be placed with implant over denture. If there are a few residual teeth, implants need to be combined, then that's IARPD. In most cases, in terms of treatment outcome, full fixed implant restoration has the best outcome. Bone loss is severe and the patient cannot adapt to the over denture type. A fixed hybrid denture can be the option to use. Today, we talked about treatment options briefly in the offline lecture. More details, including clinical cases, will be provided. And we will share the clinical cases with the audience. And I hope I will see you in the offline lecture. Thank you.